Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Beliefs of Islam with me, Hassan Hadi. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the existence of God from personal monotheism to deviation, the problem of Wahdat al Wujud. Now, one of the common problems which arise in the discussion of authentic Islamic Tawheed or the concept of the oneness of God, that the oneness of Allah has the problem of all specifications and particular minute details as to what Tawheed actually entails. Many would assume that since the Quran is clear and that the reports of the family of the Holy Prophet, Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all, are likewise clear that there would exist no divergence or deviant understanding among the followers of Islam in the world in regards to Tawheed, but sadly this is not the case. For example, if one were to visit some of the centers of the more radical followers of the deviant Islamic sects, that would find that there exists a group of so-called Muslims who have followed their scholars in affirming that Allah has the attributes of physicality. Such people argue that when Allah descends his foot into the pits of hellfire every Thursday, and they argue that Allah has two eyes, two hands, and other such qualities. They may claim that they do not believe that Allah is like unto human beings, but when pressed for an explanation as to what this means when we say that Allah has two hands, they will refuse to explain. Likewise, they will argue that Allah is physically above the earth and He rests upon a physical throne. Now, such a concept is known as anthropomorphism, in which the deity of Islam is sadly thought to resemble the characteristics of His creation, namely mankind. Despite the fact that the holy Imams, Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all, have waged war against such a concept, one finds that a large number of Muslims in the world today still hold on to it vehemently. On the other end of the spectrum, there is a much greater problem, one which has crept even into the traditional circles of the Shia world due to the influence of philosophy and unrestricted mysticism. This trend is known as the belief in Wahdat al-Wujud, or the belief known as the unity of existence. It's important to know that unfortunately, due to the extreme exclusiveness of both disciplines of philosophy and the discipline of unrestricted mystical practices, which both carry their own unique terminologies and languages, there exists a barrier for the lay person to understand the full meaning of such concepts. This topic, which cannot receive sufficient coverage in this episode alone, and so shall span at least the duration of one more episode, but in short, it's important to know that since such concepts emanate from both Sufism and philosophy that we ought to know the position of our Imams on such groups and their beliefs before proceeding to understand what these doctrines entail and why we must shun them. It's been narrated from Imam Hassan al-Askari, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. Our master, Imam al-Askari, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, has also been reported to have said to Abu Hashim al-Ja'fari the following. O oh, Abu Hashim, there will come a time where people's faces are laughing and joyous, while their hearts are dark and indeterminate. The Sunnah among them is innovation, and the innovation is Sunnah. The believer among them is the mean and the evil one venerated. Their rulers are oppressive, and their scholars through the doors of darkness proceed. Their wealthy pillage is the provision of their poor. Their young proceed their old, and every ignorant to them is an authority, and every assignee to them is poor. They do not differentiate between the sincere and the doubtful, nor do they know the sheep from wolves. Their hearts are the most evil of God's creation on the face of earth, because they incline towards philosophy and Sufism. By Allah, the Imam swears here, they are of the enemies and people of distortion. They exaggerate in their love for our opponents, and they misguide our Shia and followers. Now this hadith is mentioned in the book of Safinat al-Bihar by al muhaddith al-Qummi, Volume 2, page 58. It's also been reported that Al Hussein bin Abu Al Khattab said, One day I was with Abu Al Hassan Al Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, at the mosque of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his pure family, when some of his companions, among whom was Abu Hashim al Jafari, came to him. Now Abu Hashim was an eloquent man and had a high position near Imam Al Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. He says, while we were standing, a group of Sufis came into the mosque. They sat in a corner of the mosque and began saying, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. Imam al-Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, turned towards his companions and said to them the following, Do not pay attention to these deceivers, for they are allies of the devils and destroyers of the basis of religion. 
It's been reported that our pure infallibles, Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all, condemned the one who adopts the philosopher's and Sufi's path. Now when Imam Sadiq, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, was asked about Sufis, he answered the following, They are our enemies. Whoever is inclined towards them, then he is one of them, and will resurrect with them. There will be people who claim they love us, but they are inclined towards them, and they try to be like them, call themselves with their name, and say what they say. Whoever is inclined towards them, he is not from us, and we are innocent from him. And whoever rejects them and refutes them, he is like someone who performed jihad against the disbelievers with the Messenger of Allah, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and his pure family. That also was in the book Safinat al Bihar by Al Muhaddith al Qummi, volume 2, page 57. This was for today. Until we meet next episode, thank you very much indeed, and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.